Welcome back bass players and musicians of all kinds. I've got a super fun lesson planned for you today. We're going to improvise five blues bass lines with nothing more than a drum beat to back us up. Each bass line will showcase one of the five pillars of blues. I call them the pillars of blues because when you use them, it sounds like you're playing the blues. So pillars of blues. There you go. Each bass line that we play through today will build upon the previous one, going from the simple to the complex. When you understand these basic building blocks, you too, yes, you too can improvise the blues. We're going to move quickly through these concepts, so be sure to pause or re-watch sections of this video as needed. As always, I want you to learn each skill solidly, one at a time. Layer these skills on as you master them. Let's get started. Wait, I'm sorry. Before we start, I want to ask you for a very small favor. You see, each topic that we cover today, I'll be just barely scratching the surface on. I could do, I mean, almost an entire lesson series on pretty much any one of these topics. So at the end of the video, I'd like you to pick one that you'd like to dig into more. Let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to make more lessons on that topic to support your musical educational needs. Thanks a lot, and now we'll get started. The first and probably the most recognizable pillar of the blues is the progression. So the chords that are used to make the song. Here's the blues progression. Four bars of the one chord, two bars of the four chord, two bars of the one chord again, then one bar of the five chord, one bar of the four chord, and finally two bars of the one chord again. Notice how it's 12 bars long. That's what they call it, the 12 bar blues, 12 bars, 12 bar blues. Now we all know that. Of course, it's so obvious now. Pretty much every blues song uses either this progression or some simple variation of it. The numbers of these chords, by the way, the Roman numerals, I mean, not the sevens, Th those Roman numerals are based on the notes of the major scale of the key that we're in. In this case, uh, I'm going to be playing in the key of A today, so we'll be starting on the fifth fret of my E string. That's where our one chord will be. So if that's one in the major scale, one, two, three, four, the four chord will be the same fret, D in this case, on uh, the, so the fifth fret on the A string, on the next string up. And the five chord will be one, two, three, four, five. That will be two frets up uh, from, from our four. Uh, that'll be the seventh fret on the A string. That is gonna be an E. So one chord in A, uh, four chord is D, and five chord is E. The one variation I'm going to use in all of the examples today is the very, is the really the most common variation that you'll see, and that's uh, the last chord instead of two bars of the one chord i'm going to do a bar of the one chord and uh then uh, a bar of the five chord so our very last chord will be the five chord so for this first example this first run through we are going to play just the roots of the chord just the root playing just one note per beat four beats per bar i'll also be using the octave sometimes so instead of hitting the e uh, the seventh fret here, say I could hit maybe the open E. So any root in any octave, anything goes as far as that's concerned. At the very end of the progression, we'll hit the uh, root of the one chord one last time just to resolve it. So we're going to end on the note A. Four clicks and we're in. Here we go. about rhythms. The blues almost always follows a swing feel. Not always, but very, very common. Swing feel is born of triplets. In this case, hitting the first and third triplets of every beat. In fact, the swing feel is so ingrained in most blues songs that we can hit the triplets pretty much whenever we want to. In this playthrough, I'm going to stick to roots again. So in this example, just, just playing roots, but our variation will be the rhythm. That's our next layer. 
I'm going to feel free to hit any one of these three triplets, and I might even feel free to miss a downbeat now and again. So uh, any one of those triplets is, is fair game, but I am going to stick to roots. If you need help with triplets, I've got a video on that. But for now, uh, think of them as three equally spaced notes within a beat. You can say one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or ba 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 ba. That's the that's the feel that we're that we're going for here. When in doubt, listen to the drums, and you can fall back on that. Four clicks and we're in. Here we go. Now that we've got the roots and the rhythm covered, we can start to have a little bit more fun. Remember when we looked at the chord progression and all of the chords had sevens on them. Those are called dominant seven chords and they make up the vast majority of chords played in the blues. Pretty much all of them are dominant seven chords. A dominant seven chord is built from the first, third, fifth, and flatted seventh notes of the major scale. Whatever chord you are on, you just start playing that pattern on the root note. Again, you can play octaves if you want to. So instead of playing the flatted seventh of your A, which happens to be a G in this case, you can play the lower G instead. So you play that pattern off the A during the A7 chord, you play that pattern off of the D during the D7 chord, and you play that pattern off the E, that's right, during the E7 chord. These notes are called chord tones, by the way. Tones of the chord, right? Chord tones, kind of makes sense. It's what the other instruments are, for the most part, playing. So if we play those notes, the notes that everyone else is playing, it shouldn't sound too bad. That's kind of the philosophy here. But there's one more note that I call the honorary chord tone. This note works great on any major chord in almost every style, but especially, especially in the blues. This note is scale degree six. It's the sixth note of the major scale. You can learn more about scale degrees if you want to in my scale degrees lesson, but for now, just think of it as the note right here. For this next example, we have all these notes available. One, three, five, six, and flat seven. Or, of course, the octave equivalents. We still want to play root notes most of the time, especially uh, at the beginning of a chord change. But our chord tones and scale degree six, the honorary chord tone, are really good options as well. Four clicks, here they come. Okay, now it's time to really let our hair down and bust out the whole scale. Most blues songs sound great if you just play a Mixolydian scale over every single chord. Oftentimes, if you use the same exact scale over every single chord, it's actually gonna sound really terrible and it's not gonna be in the style that you want it to, whatever style that is. But in the blues, Mixolydian works most of the time. Compared to our last example, we're just adding the second and fourth notes of the major scale to our previous chords. So scale degrees two and four. Here's what that looks like. So we'll use A mixolydian for our A or A7 chord. We put that scale starting on D for our D or D7 chord. And we take that same shape and we bring it up to E. And that's what we use for our E or our E7 chord. So here we go again for our fourth run through of our blues bass lines. Uh, we're gonna, again, prioritize root notes and chord tones, but also taking advantage of the full Mixolydian scale. So basically just the major scale with a flat seven for every single chord. Okay, here it comes.
Okay, we're really cooking now. But I have just one more thing I want to add as our last pillar of the blues, and that's chromatics. Chromatics what just means that uh, we're going to play in half steps. So uh, that's for us, that's every single fret on the bass. I don't want you to play every single fret, okay? No, nobody said that. Well, maybe I said that, but that's not what I meant. It's, it's gonna sound terrible. But you can play some half steps between some of the scales, some of the scale notes, to make some connections a a as a way to go from one scale note to the, to the next. This might take a little bit of trial and error to make it sound the way you want it to, but it's a fantastic tool that you can use to really spice up your blues bass lines. We have on one end of the spectrum, the roots and the rhythms, which are foundational. And we have on the very other side of the spectrum, the chromatics, which are really just that, that little bit of extra flavor. Think of these skills as forming a pyramid where the bass, huh, get it, bass, bass. Uh, the bass is where you're hitting the bass notes, the, the roots and on up to the top where you have the chromatics that you use, but maybe not as often as the other skills that we have available to us. So just keep that in mind as you wield your newfound weapons of the blues. Enjoy. And there you have it, five pillars of blues, giving you five graduated steps with which to learn. Like I said at the beginning, please let me know in the comments if you have one of these subjects that you'd like to dig into more seriously, and I'd be happy to make more videos for you on that subject. Thank you for being here today. I love that you were here. Uh, I hope that you found some of the bluesy bass sounds that you're looking for, and I hope that you go forth and uh, make music with them. <laughs>